Hello everybody, it is Dan the Bugman back with another bug video and today is a very special video and the video topic is basically going to be the summary and theme of my YouTube channel and that is a term that I like to call integrated pest management. What does that mean? Integrated pest management. It's a very odd term. When I first heard it, I didn't really know what it meant, but I'm going to break it down to you. In short, I'm going to be talking about integrated pest management, and then I'm going to be demonstrating some integrated pest management. Without further ado, let's get into the video. If we break down this phrase word by word, it's quite simple. Pest management, that is controlling things that we consider pests with an integrated approach. Okay, so integrated means there are many parts to it. If you integrate something, you take them and you put them all together. So that means we are managing pests with many tools and parts that come together for one solution. And that solution is to get rid of pests in a structure. And that is the kind of pest control that I am in in my career. It's called structural pest control. That is different than agricultural pest control, which is very important. That is keeping pests out of crops that are grown in the field. And there are a couple other types of pest control, but the one that I am in, and one of the most important ones, in my opinion, is structural pest management. So today I'm going to describe what integrated pest management is and why it is important. So what does that mean for you? In a very short version, that means that there are different ways to get rid of pests besides just spraying chemicals. And that's what a lot of people call them is, oh, what are these chemicals doing? What are these chemicals doing? Um, I like to refer to them as products. We have a lot of products. Some of them are chemicals. Some of them are other tools that we use to get rid of pests. When someone says pest chemicals, right, I would break that down into a few different categories, but that simply means something that the animal is getting on them or ingesting that is poisonous to them and causes them to die. So if there's a product that gets on an insect's skin and in turn kills the insect, that is what we call an insecticide. Insect and aside just means to kill it, right? So this product kills the pest. But there are lots of things that, killing, that can kill pests. Um, a chemical can kill pests. Temperatures can kill pests. Um, squishing it can kill a pest. So there are a lot of ways to kill an insect. But for the most part in the pest control industry, when you say insecticide, that is referring to a chemical. Then there are, for example, rodenticides that kill mice and rats. Those are the chemicals that we talk about. And integrated pest management, to me, and how most people should interpret this is, that means there are other ways to get rid of pests besides spraying chemicals. And as someone that works in a pest control company and my family owns a pest control company, to me, that would, that would seem counterintuitive that I would uh, be preaching about other ways to get rid of pests besides spraying chemicals because that is a large part of what we do. But I am here to tell you that most pest infestations can be solved without using chemicals. Now, chemicals and products, they help a ton and information in your brain um, and then executing this information in your house and around your home is also very helpful in getting rid of pests. But I'm trying to tell you that a lot of times people have pests because they are dirty. And that means if they kept their home extremely clean inside and out that they would never have pests. But they don't do that. So they have to call us and we come spray and get rid of them. And we have to use chemicals in those circumstances to get rid of the pests because they are so dirty that they create environments for these pests to live in. I'm trying to tell you that most cases, people don't need chemicals to get rid of pests. They just need to be cleaner. Now that's much, much, much easier said than done and without the proper knowledge and without the proper equipment and experience in knowing about pests that this may not be possible. And that is why my company is still in business. I'm not saying that pest control companies and chemicals are not useful. They are very useful and we would have a lot, a lot, a lot of problems without them. And there are definitely pests that I would recommend you need some kind of chemical to help get rid of, right? 
for example, termites, general bugs, mosquitoes, bed bugs, uh, those are all things that need chemicals to get rid of, right? And just, just because you have them doesn't mean you're dirty. If you have general bugs, if you have some spiders in your house, that doesn't mean you're dirty. Um, sometimes they just get inside. But if you have cockroaches in your house, that probably means at some point you were dirty or not just you, someone right next to you was dirty or the outside of your home has a lot of areas that cockroaches can live. And in turn, once they lived in these areas, they migrated directly up into your house. With integrated pest management, right, as a pest control professional, every time I go into a customer's house, into a client's business, I am looking at why these bugs or why these mice, why are they here? And it, it simply comes down to uh, just three reasons, food, water, and shelter. And it's very simple to, to me to see, oh, this is why they're here because of this, this, or this, or sometimes it's all three. So when I go in to a client's home or business, I'm looking for these three factors that create the infestation for pests, right? And sometimes they don't have them. Um, sometimes things just happen. Sometimes termites just want to eat your house. Sometimes spiders just wander inside. Mosquitoes just fly in because you have a lot of ponds in your neighborhood. Um, where I live in Kentucky, it's very hard to get away from moisture of any kind. So just because you have mosquitoes in your yard doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. It just happens. But on the other hand, there are a lot of times where the customer, knowingly or not, they have created an environment that is beneficial for pests to reproduce and infest. And that's very hard to explain to a customer sometimes. And I don't always do it, to be honest with you. I don't always tell a customer, hey, your house is filthy. That's why you have cockroaches everywhere. Or hey, you've got, you know, a yard full of leaves, that's why you have hundreds of ants and spiders getting into your house. But sometimes it's just best not to say anything. If you tell someone that their house is dirty, they're not gonna be super happy with you. Sometimes I can tell if they're gonna be willing to work with me, like they're like, what do I do to get rid of this? Or like, what do I need to do? Sometimes I tell them, hey, you need to take better care of your landscaping. You don't need to have, you know, a foot of pine straw around your house. Um, you need to get the old out before you put new stuff down in the spring. Or hey, you need to take your fridge out and pull your stove back and you need to clean these 10 years of crumbs that have accumulated behind your appliances because you never clean and you're always getting crumbs everywhere. You know, I like to consider myself a clean person, but when I cook, stuff goes everywhere. It just happens, right? You just have to clean up after yourself it's a part of life. But the reason I'm getting into all of this, right, is not really to say, hey, this person's dirty. Look how clean I am. I don't have any bugs in my house. I'm trying to say, <clears throat> I'm trying to say that if everyone can understand better why these pest infestations happen, there won't be so much heartache. And I guarantee you, um, my company will still be in business forever and ever um, because pest control, it's something that just happens, right? Termites and mosquitoes and all these things, they don't just disappear. It's always gonna happen. So no, I'm not trying to put myself out of business. I think that would be a silly assumption to make from watching this video. But I know some people will think that, that is what I'm trying to say, but it's not what I'm trying to say. Quickly, I'm gonna go over some ways that you can keep yourself pest free without spraying chemicals, without using insecticides or pesticides. So quickly, I'm gonna go through some ways you can help prevent having any pests in your house or place of business, right? Number one is exclusion. That is a very cool term to me, and it makes a lot of sense. That simply means that you are excluding any pests from getting inside your house. You are sealing any holes, any little cracks around your house that bugs or mice can happen to get into. A lot of times, to be quite honest, it is impossible to seal every single hole in your house, but uh, you can definitely help. There are many, many products that seal holes. There are many ways homes are built that help prevent this. 
I'm not gonna go get into a bunch of the details, but exclusion is a very important way to keep pests out of your home. That just means you're making the structure more pest proof. So if they never get in, then you're not gonna have any issues. So exclusion is a very good way to prevent pests without using chemicals. Another good way is to eliminate any food sources. That can be inside or outside the house. So if you have crumbs inside your house, if you have a garbage can that's overflowing outside of your house, that is a food source for all kinds of pests. You need to make sure your garbage can is not dirty, make sure it is away from your house and it is taken out once a week or however often the garbage comes. Another great way is to eliminate any shelter for pests, okay? And simply by having a house being in a building, you are creating some kind of shelter for pests, right? It's a shelter for yourself. Bugs are much smaller and they're gonna see this as a shelter area. But uh, they don't really like the kind of, the same exact shelters that we like. So they don't like a nice tall ceiling with fireplace and a couch. They like crumbs and cracks and leaves. And like I said earlier, landscaping, if you've got a bunch of landscaping around your house, that is going to create extra shelter for pests. So eliminate any shelter areas. Um, attic is a prime example. If your attic is ab absolutely stuffed with boxes, um, we get brown recluse spiders in attics. I made a video about that and they love all those boxes. So eliminate shelter areas, eliminate any moisture. Um, in this area that often starts in the crawl space of your home. 90% of houses in where I live have crawl spaces. Keeping the moisture levels low in a crawl space is very good. Sometimes you have drainage issues where the water drains in your crawl space. You need to make sure you have good gutters to get the moisture away from your house. Sump pumps, um, those may be necessary sometimes. And other tools will be the fifth category that I will talk to you about getting rid of pests. And one tool that I love to use is a glue board. Once pests get into your house, um, these little sticky traps, I've got one with me, I'll go get it. They are usually about yay big. They have sticky on one side, nothing on the other. And you put them around the edges of your home, usually inside, usually in the garage, those areas, not outside. They would get uh, dissolved with moisture and rain and stuff, but you set these up and they catch any bugs that come inside. They will catch mice as well. So um, here's one I will show you how it works. It's like a uh, Band-Aid kind of, but it's got a layer and this is all sticky. So this one's kind of weird. It just has little strips on it, but it's sticky. It's not so sticky that I can't pull my hand off, but it is sticky enough that if a bug crawls on here, they won't be able to escape. So that is a cool tool that we use. You will see a lot of times when I'm doing treatments, I will use glue boards for all kinds of, all kinds of pests. They are a very useful uh, tool. They help us see where pests are coming from. You know, if you set a glue board up like this against the wall and you have a bunch of bugs on one side and there's none on the other, you know there must be coming from somewhere over here and crawling this way. So sometimes that's a door or sometimes that's uh, another room in the house and they're coming from there so you can tell. That's a good way to get rid of pests without using chemicals. Um, another way to get rid of pests without using chemicals is to vacuum them. There are vacuums that are specifically made for things like cockroaches and bed bugs. My company doesn't have any or use any but I've seen them. All it is is just a, a specialized vacuum with a, with a tip at the end that can get through into cracks so if I'm doing a cockroach treatment, um, I can use this vacuum and say I open the door and there's 20 cockroaches, which happens all the time. Uh, instead of just spraying them, I would simply vacuum them up and they get caught in the container and then I can take them and throw them in the neighbor's yard. Um, another way you can get rid of pests without using chemicals is by stepping on them, which is requested in my videos um, all the time. So I'm going to do it again um, I'm going to step on a couple bugs and then I'm going to vacuum them up. It's what all you guys want to see. So you know what, what the hey, uh, I've got at this point 500 subscribers. I think probably 480 of you would like to see me step on some bugs. So I've been saving up some bugs that I'm going to step on. Um, while I've got you here, please like the video, 
follow me on TikTok. I, I decided to get a TikTok against my better judgment, but I will be posting more short action videos on TikTok. Um, those will be, you know, these videos are longer, much more in depth content, but TikToks can be short and they'll be funny. And you know, I'll just post whatever I want on there. Sometimes it'll be, you know, spraying roaches or spraying wasps or, you know, whatever little clip I see throughout the day. Cause there, there are, there are a lot of those that I get. I'm like, oh, I can't really make a whole video about this, but hey, this is pretty cool. So I'll be posting YouTube shorts and TikToks about those. So without further ado, let me go get these bugs and we will step on them. Whenever you do step on a bug, I would recommend getting something with like a flat bottom because uh, it'll get like crushed. If you have something with like a bunch of ridges, you might not get it well the first time. You might end up like only stepping on half of it and not really killing it all the way. So I would do that. That's more humane. So you know you're getting it, you know, in one crunch instead of maybe just getting half of it and some of it getting stuck and kind of being half alive whenever it's not really dead yet. As you can see, the stink bug and the bugs I'm using today, they are not alive. They are just dried up and crunchy. So here goes the first one. Uh, I got stuck on the bottom, I guess. And then I got a lot of requests for using like sliders, an old crunchy spider that I will step on with my slider. All right. For the main event, I've been saving up this big boy. Uh, this is a cicada. There were a bunch of them that hatched out this year. Um, that one's big and I'm sure it'll get a big old crunch. I got requests for sneakers. So I'm gonna use a sneaker on this one. Yeah, whatever. Ugh. Yeah, see how dried up it is? All insects and spiders have exoskeletons, which means they don't have bones on the inside. They have a hard shell on the outside. So that is why all of these bugs um, they're all crunchy and they don't just dissolve. So that's what happens um, when you step on bugs and I will be vacuuming this up, which is another great way to get rid of pests. So if you have any questions about how to get rid of pests without using chemicals, just let me know and I will give you my best uh, advice. So thank you guys for watching until next time.